Welcome back. Uh, we are going to have the next uh, presentation here by Claria Pharma, and we welcome CEO Jesper Wiklund. Jesper, the floor is yours. Hi, Alf. Thank you very much. A pleasure to be here uh, with you today. So I'm going to pre uh, present Claria Pharma. So Claria, we are a publicly traded company. We're traded on the stock on NASDAQ First North, and uh, we are a drug delivery platform technology company. We formulate uh, already approved medicines into our drug delivery technology. And in so doing, uh, we develop new products that are uh, meeting significant unmet medical needs. And that's really the, the key thing for us is that we really aim in all of our product selection, in all of our development to really focus on patients, focus on problems that they have, and we focus on solving those problems with our delivery technology. So if I explain a little bit about what that technology is. It's an alginate film. It's a small film. It's about the size of a stamp or maybe half a stamp. And you place this on the inside of your cheek, inside your mouth. And when you do that, it immediately attaches and then it stays in place for about five to 10 minutes. So it's very, very sticky and it stays there and it stays on the side of the mucosa. It does not melt right away, but it stays there. And during that time, whatever active substance, whatever pharmaceutical drug that we've loaded into this film then transfers ac across the mucosa and into the blood. So what, what does not happen is that it melts in the mouth and that you swallow it. Again, it goes across the mucosa. And this then allows us to formulate products into our film that are not bioavailable, that are not taken up by the body if you swallow them. And this is if we move on to you know, our strategy and really how do we choose products? How do we choose which of all the possible uh, 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 development programs that we could undertake, how do we choose which ones to do. And again, we ask ourselves two questions. And by asking ourselves these two questions, we then narrow down on where the biggest unmet medical needs are. So the first question is, is the current product that is being used either an injectable or is it a nasal spray? And if so, does this present a problem? Because sometimes, of course, an injection or nasal spray is not a problem but we focus on the areas where this is a problem. So uh, in here then, in that sort of top right-hand corner, you then see our pipeline. And, and this we believe is, this is absolutely important because when we solve unmet medical needs, when we solve problems for patients, that's also when we create products that are valuable for the patients, for the system. And at the end of the day, that's how we also create a valuable company. So if we then look at our pipeline, the first uh, most advanced asset, the one that has come the furthest in development is sumatriptan. Sumatriptan is the most commonly used medicine for the acute treatment of migraine. Here we have completed the pivotal study, the study that is required for uh, approval. And we are now in the process of going through approval uh, uh, in the United States and in Europe. I'll talk more about this program. We then also have and uh, epinephrine. Uh, we have naloxone, and then we have a number of preclinical programs. Epinephrine is a perfect example also of this strategy. So epinephrine, what we're trying to do there is we're trying to replace the EpiPen. The EpiPen is a, is a very well-known product that many people know. It is an auto-injector pen that is carried by people who suffer from severe allergies. And if you suffer from a severe allergy and for example, peanuts or bee stings, if you then are bit by a bee, what happens is you, you can go into something called anaphylactic shock. And when you go into anaphylactic shock, um, you start swelling up. It's an overreaction of the, of the immune system. You start swelling up. And if it uh, doesn't uh, get treated, uh, people can, the, all the uh, tissue around the neck starts to swell up to a point where people actually choke to death. So it's a very, very serious disease. And the treatment here is adrenaline. So you inject adrenaline uh, by, using an by using an injectable pen. Now, this of course uh, 
has a lot of uh, challenges with it. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to develop a film. So you, instead of having to inject somebody, a, a small child or yourself with a, a injectable pen that you then have to put into the thigh and, and sh shove a pen into the thigh of your child, for example, here you can just uh, put in a small little film into the mouth. That's such an easier thing to do. It's such a lower hurdle in terms of the decision-making process associated with should I, should I not put this medication to use? And here, we believe that this is going to solve the biggest problem in this particular indication, which is that almost always when a parent uh, applies an EpiPen to a child, uh, it's done too late. And because it's done too late, this condition becomes much harder to treat. And with our film, obviously the hurdle to do so, to put in a film inside the mouth is much, much lower. And so therefore um, uh, we believe that we will get at this biggest problem, which is treated too late. And this is in a market which uh, gen sales of various epinephrine formulations sell for well in excess of $2 billion a year uh, worldwide. So if we can come in and we can get, make this product work we're gonna have a truly disruptive technology, a truly disruptive product in a multi-billion dollar market. And this program, we have also partnered with our uh, partner, Imbrium Therapeutics, who, where we have done a very nice deal. We have double digit royalties and fully funded um, development uh, for the US rights. So if I, I, I took a bit of time there talking about epinephrine because I think that's a perfect example that also illustrates A, the power of our technology and when applied right, what it can do. And also of course, it's our second most advanced program. And it's very exciting because we recently closed a very attractive partnership with the Embryum Therapeutics on this particular molecule. But if we focus a little bit more on uh, sumatriptan, we, um, I'm gonna move ahead here. We, this year received our bioequivalence data. This is the study that was required for us. So which will serve as the study that we will submit to the regulatory authorities, both in Europe and in the United States to apply for approval of this product. We completed this study about a month and a half ago and the study was unequivocally possible. It was a terrific result. It was the best possible result we could have had. So we're very, very happy about that. And on the basis of this result, we will now be preparing to submit uh, our approval uh, documents, our approval files. Um, we already know because this has been clearly sort of communicated and agreed with the EMA, the European uh, Authority, that this study by itself is sufficient for us to file for approval. And so we're going to uh, get the file in uh, next year and it takes about a year to get the approval. So we will be in, in a position to have both the approval and the commercial launch of our first product in Europe in 2023. And that's of course, very, very exciting for us. Um, on the US side, the study that we've just completed, that's the main study, the pivotal study that needs to be done that's been pre-agreed and everything is sort of, there's no ambiguity there, that's, that's all clear. However, uh, with the FDA, we are having continued discussions about whether or not we will need to do some other studies. And I don't wanna go into too much detail about that, but um, if we, when we do have a clear perspective, we will of course communicate that. Uh, we have very productive discussions with the FDA. So uh, we think that we're gonna have clarity most likely this year, probably sometime after the summer. Um, and um, then we will know exactly what needs to be done. Uh, it may or may not be the case that we have to do additional studies. If we do, we, they will be complementary to the study that we've already closed. So Sumatriptan is a late stage program, which is basically getting, is ready for file in Europe and close in the United States. So if we spend a little bit more time talking about what the, idea is here with this program. Migraine, as many of you I'm sure know, is a very, very serious disease. This is not having a headache. This is a debilitating disease where affected uh, patients 
they are knocked out of, of normal function. They're typically you lie in your bedroom with the curtains closed because you're also very light sensitive and you suffer from just debilitating headaches and are, you're incapable of doing anything of the normal things one does in life. And this can last for one day. It can sometimes last for two days. And also uh, that can happen very often, once a month or more than once a month. So it's a, it's a very serious disease that has a very severe and negative impact on the lives of the patients that suffer from this disease. It is um, the majority of grown-ups who suffer from this are women, but also many children suffer from this disease. So it's actually one in five women and one in 11 children that, that suffer from migraine, which is, uh, most people don't know that, that it's so widespread. Now, why are we developing a new formulation of sumatriptan? And that is because here we have another unmet medical need. The problem is today, there are tablets and you can use these tablets. Uh, the issue is that 80% of the people who suffer from migraine also suffer from nausea, meaning you throw up. Uh, maybe not every single time, but often. And of course, if you throw up, if five minutes earlier you've taken a tablet, uh, that's no good. Then people move to nasal sprays. Nasal sprays have uh, a bunch of challenges. They're very variable and the uptake is, is not predictable. So people actually move to injections. So here people stand up in the middle of the night if that's when they feel that they're getting their uh, attack and actually go you know, into, uh, into the, the bathroom. You, you take out a syringe, draw out some, some injection liquid and actually inject this intramuscularly just to make sure that you really have the product on board. And it's this um, functionality that we will be able to replace with our film because again, if you recall, the, the active substance goes across the oral mucosa and into the blood. It does not go into the stomach. So we can actually, we have now a film that has the functionality of the nasal spray and, and the injection. It's more repeatable and better than the nasal spray and much easier to use than the injection. And now again, we've shown this in our clinical trials. So now it's a matter of, of, of getting this product out to the market and to patients. And as a proof of the sort of unmet medical need here, 80% of patients who suffer from migraine say that they're willing to treat a new and acute treatment. And there has not been a new and acute treatment developed in migraine for over 20 years. So we're gonna be the first new formulation in this space for the last 20 years. And we believe that that's gonna be a very good starting point for us to uh, try to launch our product and get it out into the market and to help all of these people who are suffering from, uh, from migraine. There's one more slide, I'm gonna jump back up. There's one more slide I wanted to show. And that is if we look at the commercial potential of the products in our pipeline, we have projected peak annual sales in the United States and Europe for Sumatriptan to come in at around $250 million per year. The uh, cannabis, we, we don't have time to talk about cannabis today, but we have a very exciting program also in cannabis where basically we combine um, cannabis into our films and then also get a very rapid uptake. So you get, uh, uh, a superior cannabis product, that's an enormous market and we've come quite far there. The other two uh, programs, which we now have in clinical development, naloxone and the adrenaline film that I spoke more about, they are addressing gigantic markets. Again, the, uh, the adrenaline market is well in excess of $2 billion a year only in the United States. So uh, I think it's safe to say that should any of these uh, uh, come to market, we're gonna have some very, very interesting products and given the fact that we have a proven technology, we know that it works and we're working with um, approved compounds, we believe that the probability that we're actually gonna to get to the market with these programs is quite high. So I think I will leave it there. Uh, that should be about 15 minutes, which was the time I was allotted. Uh, I could maybe very quickly um, mention that we have a strong team that we've built up over the years. We are manning all the sort of key functions that one needs in a um, pharma company. We have recently, um, so recently that uh, 
he's not on this slide. We've just recruited a chief medical officer, which was the last sort of piece of the puzzle. This is a very, very strong individual uh, and uh, we're super excited to have him. So we now have a very strong team and uh, uh, a good setup, we believe, to execute on the strategy and the business plan that I've now presented to you. Thanks for your time and attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jesper. That was uh, okay. fantastic, right on time. Um, yeah. Sorry about the delay, though. Um, you had a tremendous result, as you, as you just said, in, uh, in your bioequivalence uh, study uh, earlier this year with Sumatrip Tan. And uh, it's, you said it, but I think it's worth repeating that this study, uh, which you ran against two nasal sprays, one that's improved in Europe and one that's improved in uh, North America, and that will pave the way for approvals of your product in both sides of the Atlantic, or, or really globally, is that correct? That's correct. And I think, the, so thanks for bringing this up. 50 minutes is not a long time. Uh, but yes, you know, we, so this was positive. This was huge. This was the biggest thing that's happened to our company, where, you know, just generally speaking, we proved that our technology works. But also, of course, we now took very significant steps towards the market in both of these territories. So just to be clear, with this result in hand, we are going to file and there's a very high probability that we will get approved in Europe. And we also know that we are going to file and uh, in the United States. So uh, there's, there's no question that we're going to be able to file in the United States. The only question is now how much more work, if any, are we going to have to do uh, to file in the United States. But for both sides of the Atlantic, since we were able to show bioequivalence to both the comparative products, the one approved in the United States and the one approved in Europe, we are actually in a very, very good position to, to be able to file this product for approval in both territories. And again, you, you said something about it uh, in your presentation, but it's worth repeating as well. Uh, how do you see the, the time span from here until you make, say, yeah. f the first sales, so to speak? Yeah, so uh, since we're not 100% clear on, uh, internally we're planning uh, we're, we're not 100% clear on what's happening in the United States, but internally we're planning that we're positioning it for a launch probably 2024 in the United States. And we know that we're going to be able to launch, uh, according to our schedule, in 2023 in Europe. Hmm. So 2023 in Europe will be able to launch. Hmm. And uh, how is your thinking around partnership or licensing? Uh, yeah. Is it likely that you're going to go all on your own or do you need a partner too? to attack yeah. the market. So, yeah, you know, we're a tech company. We have our competence is in our technology and in developing uh, various programs. Um, we're not a sales company, so we're going to uh, find partners to do the uh, sales uh, and the commercial fulfillment and everything, both in Europe and in the United States. And now with the result in hand, uh, we're going to begin that process for Sumatrip 10 in um, this year. Mm. Um, uh, as I mentioned previously, we have already secured a partner for the US for one of our earlier programs with Adrenaline. So if you think about our business model, really what we're, we're going we're gonna to continue to sort of mine the value and develop the value of our technology platform, and then essentially build you know, a portfolio of royalty streams to very attractive assets mm. in, in, uh, in, in, in uh, both in the United States and in Europe. Mm. And uh, simultaneously, you have two, especially, uh, programs in, in, clinical, uh, in clinical development uh, that's uh, probably also going to uh, take some resources from the company. Do you have, a, you mentioned a strong team, but is it big enough to, to uh, facilitate both uh, commercialization of Sumatriptane and development of uh, Naloxone and, and Adrenaline? Our team is big enough and with the addition also of our chief medical officer, we are well, we have everyone we need to execute our plan, uh, which is to develop products and then out license them. We are not planning on commercializing our own products. So we don't have to build up, you know, a big commercial team. We don't have to build up a sales force in the United States or in Europe. We're, go we're going to develop and out-license. And I, uh, it's worth mentioning this deal that we did with Imbrium Therapeutics, we out that and we're getting a milestone payments um, yeah, of 560 million Swedish children there. And we're going to get a double digit royalty. 
So these are not small royalties that we're talking about. We're talking about significant royalties in significant markets. So if we get anywhere, you know, uh, if we get onto the market and, and start getting these kind of royalties, it's going to be very valuable cash flows. So just because we're not commercializing ourselves does not mean that we're not going to be, you know, generating significant revenues. We will. It's it's just we're going to let people that are expert at that do that, and we're going to do what we're expert at, which is development. Great, Jesper. Thanks very much for doing this, and I also look forward Great. to speaking to you again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alf. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you.